Hello everyone, my name is Hasham. I'm the owner of Clemson Aeronautics where we make the riveting and dimpling systems. Uh, unfortunately today, uh, today's video uh, is going to be missing a big part which was dimpling the uh, horizontal stabilizer skin. Uh, uh, too bad because I used the pneumatics system with our system uh, here and um, it was uh, fun actually doing it because it's foot operated and, and, and I had both hands free to uh, manage the skin but best life and uh, now we're gonna continue our build with our rear horizontal stabilizer spar putting the doubler and all the other pieces on there and now I'm starting the riveting process for the doubler with the uh, rear spar and the hinges uh, with the rear spar and actually the little sticker that's on the back of the hinges is a little aggravating <laughs> actually it is a lot aggravating to remove and I found the only way that is really decent have a steel ruler and I'd kind of push it kind of flat like this to remove it without scratching the uh, the paint after I move half of it the other half comes out a lot easier one of the things that I like doing also is when I line up my um, hinges with the uh, with this par, I try to put my number 30 drill in there to line up also a little better before I click it in. I have the riveting die that have the cup in it for the manufactured head in the stationary jaw and the movable jaw is the flat one that way I can hold it in place when I push the trigger the movable jaw does the work for me while the other one is steady and of course uh, to remember to mark the holes that is not to be riveted in the center here so and I am set to uh, to rivet the 470 rivets and uh, that is here in the uh, <coughs> the doubler there is only two rivets that is uh, flat hat rivets that's going to be riveted with flush on this side um, when I get set up for that I will do them but for now I will be doing the elevator hinges right here and I just discovered something that really silly I put the elevator hinges 
on the wrong side. These are supposed to be on the other side. Thank God I didn't start riveting. So I'm going to flip them over to the other side and um, start riveting them. Mistakes will be done. Uh, and hopefully we will correct them before it's too late. Now it's time to rivet the elevator hinges into place. Uh, of course we have to know that this rivet is a little bit shorter than the rivet we used on the doubler because the doubler is so thick and the hinges are so thin. So this one is a uh, 4-5 rivet. Um, uh, I got tired putting the rivets and then come back out because it's flat so I installed a couple of clicos on each side so I can lift it off the table that should make it a little easier um, to do and one uh, other note is the manufactured head is on the flange side on these and uh, remembering from the uh, <clears throat> the uh, vertical stabilizer, it was like that because the rivets on the side of the flanges later on it will be tight, and the rivets will be uh, if if we have the shop head on this side it might be a little bit too high and hard harder to uh, squeeze the rivet. That's why the manufacturer head is on this side. And also for clearance with the elevator itself. Now I had finished my riveting one rivet in each hinge, so I removed the clico next to it, and I'm putting a rivet in uh, in the one next to it, so we can prepare to squeeze that and complete that side. One thing uh, also to note, this um, flexible hose that I got from Cleveland Aircraft Tools is really well <laughs> worth the money. So if, if you are purchasing stuff from, uh, from Cleveland and you don't have one of those, uh, do yourself a favor and get one. Now the um, flathead screws that's in the middle there, there's two of them that goes underneath this. It is a 4-6 and it's in bag 1906, 1906. And this was set up for something different, so I have to change my setup and come back to rivet this one. The nut that holds this MS21042-3 have a specific torque and they mentioned to go to page 5-2 section and in page 5-2 section 5 it says 2.3 foot pounds or 28 inch pounds of torque for that nut so I'm just gonna go ahead and write it right next to here just so I can remember that 28 inch pounds I'm gonna see if my torque wrench will go down that low so now I set up my torque wrench to 28 inch pound you have to be careful not to do it foot pound because uh, some people do this mistake so make sure it's 28 inch pound
can uh, the torque on these nuts doesn't take very much to exceed so like one of those nuts I think went up to like 30 by just you know doing it and it's very easy to do so so be careful with that now the uh, rear spar is complete with all the rivets with the exception of the um, ribs and um, I guess we'll call it a day and I'd like to thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time